there are some stories that come round and round and round again. And just like the roundabouts for which it's famous, it's not the first time we've heard about the success of Milton Keynes. But today came the news that in the last decade, the town, built on a grid road system, which still isn't deemed a city however much they want it to be, had the best jobs growth of any in Britain. A new town there is going to be in the rural heart of North Bucks. Initially a village of 160 people, in 1967, under the utopian direction of the urban planners, this post-war new town was born. Expansion was rapid, more than a quarter of a million now live here. According to a study by the Centre for Cities Research Group, not only has the population of the town of the concrete cows increased by more than 16% in 10 years, making it the fastest growing in the UK, it's also seen a jobs boom of more than 18%. Kerry Pensions is the pension provider for the local football club, MK Dons. This economic news is almost as celebrated here as the local football team's thrashing of Manchester United earlier this season. So it felt right that the rapidly expanding local company Newsnight visited had been sent a rather special gift. Where are you going to put this photo? It'll be in the boardroom. This pensions provider was an office of three in 2009. Now it employs nearly 50 people and plans to double its size every year for the next five. The CEO puts it down to cheaper rents than, say, London, the availability of good staff already based in the town and its location between London, Birmingham, Oxford and Cambridge. The train lines are fantastic, the airports are fantastic, so accessibility is really good and we don't have a lot of congestion, despite people's comments about the number of roundabouts we have. Because people do make jokes about the roundabouts. They do. And our concrete cows. Purpose built down to the very last detail. Even lakes like this one dug out to improve people's quality of life. When they designed Milton Keynes, they were also creating a blueprint for growth. Could they have been any more successful? And what can other towns learn from this one? At the Open University, we found few students, of course. The place that pioneered distance learning for all has grown up with Milton Keynes, arriving here in the late 60s. The Vice-Chancellor told us innovation is now part of the growth story. Milton Keynes has really been trailblazing around the use of smart city technologies in order to show how a modern city can deploy all kinds of technologies to improve the environment for business and local residents. So for instance, you'll soon be able to download an app onto your phone that enables you to find a parking space in real time or to book that parking space when you're searching for somewhere to park. So we're back to the roads and those roundabouts, quite right. But what's it like to live here? Nearly 30 years ago, the BBC met Karen Dayton, who was struggling to adapt to her new home. Well, all of a sudden, you get plonked in the middle of the country and you stop somewhere near Newport Pagnell Services Station, where nobody knows everybody, and they've all come up here for the different reasons. Well, Newsnight tracked her down. The first to move into her estate, she had to dial a bus to get around town. How's it changed? Well, it's not a building site anymore, just, well, I don't know, some bits still are, but, um, yeah, it's OK, but I really do love Milton Keynes, it's, it's a great place to live. So the planners got it right, and we've found one of the only people involved in designing Milton Keynes who's still alive. He's unimpressed with the ambition of the government's plans for new garden cities to ease the housing shortage. You need it to be quite big. Little tiny projects like Ebb's Fleet or the Vista new town project are really just suburbs or small towns and they will never support universities or uh, high level services so people will travel a lot they'll, they'll be very car dependent as for his creation mr edwards thinks milton Keynes isn't finished yet that the town will continue to expand which will mean more roundabouts but also more jobs and growth <laughs> <laughs>